Yo, what's good? This is Chef David Olson with Live Fire Republic, and we've landed here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Beer City, USA. We're at Brewery Vivant, one of the most incredible awarded breweries in the entirety of the United States. I'm gonna introduce you today to one of my very good friends, founder and owner of Brewery Vivant, Jason Spaulding. He's taking us behind the scenes for a tour and helping us choose the beer we're gonna to use to infuse into the most incredible live fire Baranosaurus sized rib cook all over the Primo ceramic grill and live fire. Y'all, I promise, you don't wanna miss this. Let's go. Buddy, I'm so dang excited to be back here with you, man. This is one of my absolute favorite breweries in the entirety of the world. I've been a customer here since the days of the doors opening. Nice. But to be here with you, man, I'm just, I'm so dang excited to hear your story and certainly to share it with everyone out here. But tell us, man, Brewery Vivant. Yeah. How does this start? Well, it's fun to have you back here because this is where all the action happens here in the brewery. So we started back in 2010. And this is a historic building that we renovated. Right. And we also renovated it to a, a LEED certification. So a leader, leadership in energy and environmental design. And we became the first LEED certified brewery in the country. But uh, that's all, you know, paying attention to how we put this place together, where all the uh, recyclability stuff goes and what, how we put it back together. Just, you know, keeping that environmental uh, aspect in mind. But, you know, this is where we make all the beer. And it's fun to have you here to show you like, this is how it's done. Well, it's amazing. And I know this isn't where you started. And as we kind of work our way on and check this out, you have a story that, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, does this start in France? Yeah, my wife and I did some traveling. I went to school in Munich, and then we did this traveling through Europe. We went to France, went to Belgium, and just fell in love with the beers over there. And, uh, you know, all these beers go great with food, you know, and that's what I love, like beer and food together. Right, right. Like you can't beat it. So. Uh, the styles of beer we make happen to go great with all sorts of foods, uh, whether it's barbecue, whether it's cheese, whether uh, it's hard meats, right. uh, but just everything done well, simply, uh, it's always better with a beer. Well, I'll tell you what, and it's better with Brewery Vivant beer, and I know we're in for a treat today. We're gonna take folks on a little bit of a tasting journey, per se, but yeah. being behind the scenes here is just incredible, right? We're in a historic building here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, you're the first lead certified brewery in the entirety of the United States. I mean, there's something to be said for that, for your vision and, and where this brewery is going. Yeah, and it's, what I, the other thing I love about this brewery is all this happens like right in a neighborhood in Grand Rapids. Like we're not yeah. out in an industrial park. Uh, people walk here, we've got uh, a great group of regulars that show up and we do the food and the beer and everything right in one spot. That's right, that's yep. right. I love how this brewery ties together not only incredible food, amazing beer in an incredible community, but all together in one space. Yep. Well, I'd say at this juncture, uh, I'd love to take a peek around here, and then I think we should probably do what maybe you and I do best, and that's maybe taste some beer. Let's do it, man. Cheers. Right. Cheers. Man, it was so much fun taking the tour back there and you selected uh, what looked to be five absolutely awesome beers. So you're gonna take us on a little journey here, yeah, right? let's do it. Okay, where do okay. we start? All right, so I've got a few things in mind. So I've got this uh, beer called uh, Zazan. We make it with uh, orange peel and telecherry black pepper. Uh, super, super good. Could go nice with like some darker meats, grilled meats. Uh, and that guy is right here. Oh, okay, all right. So this is orange peel. Orange peel, yeah. So it gives it kind of the citrus orange, but also uh, backs it up with a little uh, peppercorns. So a lot of times with uh, you grilled You can totally meats, catch it right on the nose though. Yeah, for sure. 
and the yeast that we use, you know, really accent those flavors too. Uh, but that could be a fun beer. But the one I'm really excited Louis, about. this one. What am I picking up there? Is it like almost like a little bit of like a Hefeweiz in style of like I get a little yeah, bit of that. it's made with wheat. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. But it is, that one it is 9% alcohol though. So, yeah. <laughs> we, that might so, be the other thing you're picking up. Yeah. We could see this going downhill very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll reserve that for post filming. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> go in there. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then uh, I got a couple more here. So this is that uh, bourbon barrel aged beer that I have. Wow. Okay. And so when I'm... When I'm tasting and testing beer, is there a methodology I should be thinking about from darker to lighter, lighter to darker, heavier to... Uh, when we're pairing things with food, you can go all different directions. You can okay. go contrasting, you can go complementary. I like to kind of think complementary flavors. Yeah, yeah. So we can pick like one element out of, the, out of the dish with one element out of the beer, and a lot of times those go together. I was thinking maybe that black pepper corner works. Maybe this might work with the with the orange oh, of course. Uh, and the cherry. No. So, oh, the cherry, of course. So yeah. this is old fashioned. Yeah. So it's aged in a bourbon barrel, and then we added orange and cherry in it. Uh, wow, well, that's unique. Yeah. This one's also a little strong. So. <laughs> I see. I yeah. see where this is going. Yeah. Okay. But it's one of my favorite beers, and it's it's kind of like a cocktail beer almost. I've never, I've never had a beer like this before. Yeah, I was excited for you to try that one. Whoa, because yeah. you know my favorite cocktail is an old-fashioned. That's really unique. Yeah, isn't that fun? What? When you age that beer in a bourbon barrel, it pulls like uh, vanillas in, and of course the bourbon flavors, um, from the oak, but that is pretty cool. That is really, really cool. Yeah. That's amazing. That might knock your, your people out though, because that one's 14% alcohol. 14? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is barrel-proof barrel beer yeah. here at uh, Brewery Vivant. Later. So this, this is uh, a Saison. So Saisons are typically lower alcohol. But this is, uh, I'm trying to think of the most Michigan beer we could give you. Yeah, this yeah. is a cherry Saison. So, really? Uh, it's about 5% ABV, but uh, with Michigan uh, cherries in it. So oh, it's wow. Fermented with, fermented with cherries, and it really, like, pops at you. In, well, and I know you know this, but, like, we're on a journey here in Michigan. Michigan in the wild, right? So... Bring a ton of wild game. We have big, beefy, smoked recipes, and to me, there's not anything more Michigan than outdoor cooking in the summer with amazing cherries and beer. Yeah, and this is like you know pie cherries. This isn't like sweet cherries. This is like the uh, the sour cherries that you make pies right, right. with. So it's like super unique, and we're like the number Michigan's like the number one sour cherry producer in the country. But that kind of laid in there with the, with the Saison beer. I, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm feeling that one. I'm hoping you like it. That is, at, that is awesome. That is a really, really good, and not a Saison. I mean, there's a simplicity to it, but that essence of the cherry is, I mean, it carries across the palate. It's amazing. When I think about how we would integrate that in a cook using beef ribs, I mean, there's an infinite number of ways, but I just think pairing those big, rich, savory, beefy flavors in with a beer like this, tying in the cherry, I mean, forget yeah. about it. The beer is pretty dry outside of that cherry, but right. I think with what you're talking about, that might be the perfect thing. Uh, that's amazing, that's amazing. I can tell you what, each of these beers were absolutely incredible, um, and one so unique from the other. I almost feel like we gotta come back here. We have like a four part beer series with cooking we've gotta do here. Um, yeah, but so many directions we can go, but I, I want to give you a nice, uh, a nice wide range. Well, after tasting each, I think that it is the cherry saison with the beef ribs over the fire. I think that is what we're going to do, man. There's no doubt in my mind. That is awesome. That sounds like a winner to me. Well, great. Well, this is awesome, man. Thank yeah, you man. so much. Yeah. To have some of your caliber, your expertise, and. The influence you've had here in this industry, in Michigan, and in, in globally, man, to be here with you, a friend, uh, it just means everything. To have you uh, share Brewery Vivant with us uh, in this day, man, is just awesome. And yeah, I can't wait to eat all the food on my own that we cook for this beer. Hell yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. Yeah. Thanks, man. This yeah. is awesome. Fun. Cheers.
It's time to dirty up this brand new firebox. You can't have anything looking this pretty doing barbecue. Now there's a thousand ways to skin a cat and even more ways to smoke beef ribs. Today, we're going open fire, hot smoke, no deflector plate. Check out how we set up the grill. All right, before we get into the cook, let's talk about what's on the platter. We have these absolutely incredible locally harvested bison plate ribs. Very similar to the short ribs you'd find on a cow. These are lean, beautifully colored. They do have a nice marbleization, even though bison would be considered a wild game. They do have a bit more grassy flavor, as maybe compared to the corn-fed steak you're eating on the table every single week. Now, that being said, we're gonna tune this bad boy up with a binder of the Duke's Mayo. We're using a hot sauce from my very good buddy, Jason, full of love. It's called Tumi Coco Hot Sauce. We're going in with the kosher salt, cracked black peppercorn, demerara sugar, and roasted granulated garlic. We're gonna season this bad boy up heavy, Lone Star State style, and then get it over on the Primo Ceramic Grill. Now, as it relates to the plate ribs, you could trim every last ounce of that fat off of the rib but we're eating bison not salad <laughs> so i love this just the way it is it has nice coverage across the surface it's really going to help continue to baste that beef plate rib as it continues to smoke and to me fat is flavor so let's get started in with our mayo binder now we're using a combination of duke's mayo Whoop, there we go uh, you could use olive oil you could use butter you could use uh, ghee, you could use uh, mustard, you name it. There's a thousand different binders. There's an endless argument that takes place. What's the right or the wrong binder? The right binder is one that binds its seasoning to the meat. And this combo does a pretty dang good job. Now, uh, I love the olive oil as compared to using neutral oils because I think it adds a really nice tang at the end of the day. And then we're just going to tune up the heat with this Tumi Coco hot sauce for my buddy Jason. So really good all we're gonna do here is just rub this across the entirety of the surface there's not a lot of science to this portion of the cook it's just get that hot sauce and that mayo into every single nook and cranny of this bohemoth plate rib man i'll tell you what cows are large animals bison are large animals and you better have an appetite for a cook like this <laughs> Nice, even coverage across the plate rib. Excess, just rub it off under the board. Again, the binder only needs to be as present across from surface to surface just to hold the seasoning. Too much, and you're gonna lose that seasoning to the grill, grow great, and the smoke. Next in with the seasoning. Coarsely ground kosher salt and cracked black peppercorn. Now, I use a few different gauges of peppercorn. We do have some 14 and 16 gauge in there, but what I really like most is the texture we get out of that cracked peppercorn. Really nice, fruity flavor. Uh, if you're cracking it at home, if you're just buying the stuff that's store made, there's no way that you can get that depth of flavor out of that cracked peppercorn. Do it at home. Now, next up, roasted granulated garlic. You guys, spend a couple extra bucks, get the good stuff. When it comes down to seasoning and spices, the flavor and the aroma you get out of roasted granulated garlic compared to the normal 99 cent bottle of garlic you can find in the grocery store, it's undisputable how much better the roasted garlic is out of a premium brand. Last but not least, sugar in the raw, Demerara sugar. I don't care what any pit master says in the great state of Texas, there's not a one of them the season their brisket or their short ribs with just salt and pepper. I'm not buying it. 
Now, here's my one hard and fast rule when it comes down to barbecue like this. I'm not rubbing the seasoning in, I'm patting it down into the binder. And again, there's not a lot of these hard rules uh, that I believe exist really when it comes down to barbecue, but this is one. It helps best keep that seasoning applied to the meat. Now to me, this portion's up for debate. Uh, I lean in the camp of not seasoning the underside of bison and beef ribs. Why? Because I leave the silver skin on for continuity purposes. That silver skin is totally inedible. To me, it's no different than seasoning the exterior of crab legs. I'm not gonna eat the shell, I'm not gonna eat the silver skin, there's no point in doing it. All right, while our seasoning sets and develops attack, it's time to hydrate. Now, we have three uses for our beer today. One, drinking, and that's awesome. Two is gonna be spritzing throughout the course of the cook to both maintain a degree of moistness across the exterior of the beef rib. I always promise never to say the word moist, but it's also going to help adhere smoke. And we're gonna finish these ribs today with a caramelized cherry Saison glaze. This is gonna be money. All right, this is what I was talking about as it relates to the tack. There's almost a dampness to the kosher salt, the black peppercorn, the granulated garlic, and the demerara sugar. Now what that's going to do is allow the seasoning to better stick throughout the course of the cook. When you have the tack, you're ready to put your ribs in the grill. All right, plate ribs go down over center rack. You're gonna see a flame in the bottom and it's totally okay. We're gonna close up the grill lid. We're gonna choke down that fire. We're gonna cook it about 300 degrees for the next hour, unseen and untouched. Now it's important when you open the lid to your ceramic grill that you don't allow it to stay open too long. Now, all we're doing at this juncture is introducing oxygen to a hot fire and it's gonna tune up the temp of the grill. A little bit, not a problem. Now, once it's open, reclose, we'll choke down the fire and we're totally good. While our ribs are finishing up, it's time to build out our caramelized cherry Saison sauce. We're kicking it off with one stick of cubed Amish butter and a couple glugs of olive oil. And as we like to say, it's butter for the health benefits and the olive oil for the flavor. Next in, we're going with cherry Saison. We're going with about a half can of this bad boy and we're gonna let it just slowly cook down. We're gonna sweeten it up a notch. This is a local Midwestern honey. And give me about two to three tablespoons here and finishing with our Tumi Cocoa Hot Sauce. We're gonna give that a stir, let that caramelize down and go from there. All right, this is exactly what we're looking for. The sauce is starting to reduce. The milk solids and the butter are starting to separate and caramelize alongside the honey and the beer. We have probably about another 10 to 15 minutes to go for that sauce to slowly cook down, infuse with the smoke. That's gonna be beautiful, layer upon layer atop those bison ribs. All right, check it out, we're at 170. It's time to rip these bad boys off the grill grates and get them in our butcher paper wrap with a cherry Saison braise. All right, our bison ribs are totally ready for the wrap. They're at 170 degrees. They have a beautiful mahogany color that started to develop across the surface of the plate. Now, we have plain pink, pink butcher paper out here. This is the absolute cheapest paper I could find, but it does a really good job of building additional bark. It's breathable and perfect for our bison cook here.
All right, decent wrap. Is it perfect? No. Is it good enough for who it's for? Yes. Now, this bad boy is gonna slowly braise, and by braise, I mean the meat on the inside of this wrap is gonna slowly cook in a very shallow liquid. It's gonna steam. The tendons, intermuscular tissues are gonna break down. This is gonna turn soft, beautiful, and tender to the touch. If you've enjoyed this episode as much as we love taking you on the adventure, do a couple things for me. Smash that subscribe, hit the like, leave us a comment down below, and I wanna know about your very favorite local hometown brewery. Send some love over to my friends at Brewery Vivant for all these recipes and more. Get at us at livefirerepublic.com. Until then, the time for talk is over. Let's eat. Oh, there we go. Look at that beauty. Now this bad boy is gonna go back on the grill. We're gonna let it caramelize with our cherry Saison sauce for probably the next 15 to 20 minutes. This is gonna be amazing. Oh, these are so juicy. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? Look how insanely juicy and delicious those ribs look. Now the end's always the toughest. Can we get this as tender as the rest? Let's see. <laughs> Man. Now to carve these ribs up, I typically like to take a knife and go directly along the bone, but because these are so tender, the bone literally just pulls off of the plate rib meat. Look at this. That, my friends, is bison short ribs on the Primo ceramic grill. It frankly doesn't get any better than that. Now, as we're slicing through, we're going across the bone, removing the largest hunk, and then cutting across the grain. Get through. Look at that cross section. Every bite, wall to wall, tender, juicy, succulent. This is the very best bite in wild game barbecue, hands down. This is so tender, I could literally cut it with a spoon. That being said, it's time to eat. It is so good. You have a little bit of that gaminess of the bison. You have the smoke totally rolling through from the oak wood. The cherry saison in that glaze just coats and cuts through all the fat. Wow, and there's no way <laughs> I could finish this all on my own. It's lucky Alex is here with me and we got a host, a family and friends on the inside. My friends, this has been cherry, saison, braised, and hot smoked dinosaur bison ribs all over live fire. Stay hungry. All of that olivey goodness, is that the saying? Flavor. Oh, all the flavor. Okay, <laughs> all right, one more time. Now it's important when you, oh, <coughs> smoke attack. <laughs> okay.
be kind of fun to play around with. I'm gonna need someone to take inventory of where my shoes are at, like at the end of this. If I'm yeah. laying on the floor, just someone keep inventory of my shoes. That's it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Now folks ask us all the time, what's the right way to season barbecue? Whether it's brisket, pork shoulder, plate ribs, you name it, right? Is it the up close? Is it the season from up high? Is it the turnaround J? Is it the fader from the three line? It doesn't matter, just get it on there. 